Hey guys, it's Adam Harrison from Birdwood Guitars and here with you with the daily shop vlog and what's happening in the store at the moment. Um, I had a, I was contacted by a client uh, just the other night um, with some kind of some sad news and I kind of thought it was fitting to put a, put a post up. Um, as I'm winding down for the orders, the made to order side of the business. Um, this is actually the very last order uh, for the traditional Lightning Boy um, cigar box guitar that I will actually build. Uh, I just felt it was, as I'm winding this down, um, the traditional Lightning Boy was done with the Monte Cristo boxes as such. Uh, you know, we went through a variety of different fretboards and stuff in the beginning. We, you know, we had some um, uh, she oak and you know river oak and all that sort of stuff. And you know, we had a couple that where we used uh, oak for the fretboards as well. But as we were uh, finishing up, uh, I was using these beautiful, this beautiful rosewood for the fretboards. And uh, this is actually the very, very last. Uh, I've got one more box, um, which I'll use for something else. Um, but this is the, this is officially, this is actually the very last. I just thought it fitting that this will be the last of the Lightning Boy guitar. So I will not be uh, building any more of these. Um, I'll be using similar styles and things, but I won't be using these boxes. Um, I wanted this, this one to be the very last and fitting one. This one's a little different from the normal ones I do. Um, the client had asked me to do a hand carved neck as opposed to a routed neck. So we've taken that down into the heel area. I'll, I might continue doing this a little bit more. Um, the reason I don't do a lot of this is because I've got arthritis in both my shoulders. So what I tend to find is when I do this particular type of um, shaving and sanding, I basically am out of action for the next two days. So um, I, won't, I don't often do this type of thing. I generally use the table router to, to, to put it in, but it was a request from him and you know we've, we've gone and done it. Um, with everything that's been happening here with the flooding and you know and COVID and all that sort of stuff I'm a couple of weeks behind in build so um, I will be express posting this to him today uh, so that he can use it um, I'm not giving names or anything like that but um, if he watches this you know who you are um, so yeah so this will actually be and is um, the very last Monte Cristo Lightning Boy guitar that I will do I won't do them again um, We'll do something else, we'll do something different. There's gonna be a lot of things happening. So a little bit of a somber post today. Um, you know, it's uh, life is a precious thing and you know, get out there and play. So we'll be racing this to him as fast as possible um, so that he's got time with his guitar. Um, sounds great, the only thing I need to do now is just put on some, put on some box corners and um, pack it, wrap it, pack it, bubble wrap it and send it off. Um, that guitar on its way. Very happy client. Looking forward to getting it. Um, I wish them all the best. I'm sure they're gonna kick some ass. All right, so, but yes, it is gonna be the uh, the last of the Lightning Boys that I will do. Now, excusing the disaster zone that is still down here, we're still cleaning up after the flooding that we had under here, all the water basically came through here. Um, but that's all good, it's all in the past, we're working on it. Um, I'm standing in a ditch at the moment I'm over here at a table that I've set up to do some painting. Now, we've got this one here, which will get a coat today of a water-based sealer. Uh, I try and use as much water-based products as I can, uh, just for the environment. Um, I'm also going, I've put a, a water-based stain on these guitars, you can see. I do it. I do a fairly, this is the, okay, so this is the Duke Joint Rocker. This is an order, one of the, the last Duke Joint Rocker order that I've got before I start putting some of these into production, all right, as in stock order. So you'll actually be able, you won't have to wait anymore. The whole idea of doing, of getting rid of this made to order stuff straight up is so that you guys as customers, if you're watching this as a, as a client, um, not as a builder, but so that you don't have to wait anymore. I'm just, I'm sick of waiting times kind of extending out and life getting in the way of stuff. So in other words, if I got it, I'll be doing these. There'll be stock up on the website. If you want to buy one, you go and buy one, you'll get it within a week or so. You know what I mean? Like with the shipping, postage and all that sort of stuff. That's the reason. But, 
So for builders, here we go. So the whole idea with this, this is the, I, I make these boxes, really tough. Um, Maranti, um, sides, this, like they're really strong. Um, nice size. Uh, it just means that I'm not at the mercy of um, having to wait for cigar boxes to become available or the insane costs of buying them on eBay. You know what I mean? It's like, it's pretty crazy over here. So I'll put a water-based stain on this. I've, you can see I've put in a little notch. So it's gonna look like a cigar box, basically. Um, and I don't sell them as cigar boxes, but I like the fact that they kind of, they look a bit like it, you know. It's like the pedals I make. I put them in, you know, I use the offcuts of this stuff to make the pedal enclosures. So. If you ever find this, this is brilliant stuff. I got this from Bunnings. No, I didn't. I got it from Aldi. Um, and I've had this for five years. Okay, so whenever I do brown stainings or overstain or whatever it is, it's just, this is basically, it's a decking stain and it is fantastic. It is, it, and it's lasted and lasted and lasted. And I can tell you, it's gonna last for quite a few years longer. Um, so that's the black, that's the one, the paper paper towel I use for the black. So all I basically do now is, I use the lid, because the lid's there. So let's have a little look down here. Let's move you down. You know what I'm doing there? You can see the design, it's still rocky and muddy and everything like that. It's drying out now, which is good, I'm happy about. All right, so getting in there. Now this is the Duke Joint Rocker, so we want it to be quite, you know, rough. Like it's, it's made out of old barn material and stuff like that. Um, I prefer not using old barn material, to be honest with you. A simple reason for that is that you just don't know, A, you don't know what's in it. Um, but B, um, it can be a bit rotted out and stuff. And if I'm building a cigar box, I want it to be tough. So this is actually marine grade ply um, that I've bought. It's I bought it from Bunnings. Uh, the timber here is from Bunnings as well. It's, uh, the thing I like about using this stuff is it is plantation timber. Uh, it's not old growth. Um, it's, it grows back really quickly. Um, I like using old growth timber if I can, if, it, if it's basically, um, you know, reclaimed. But there's a lot of work that goes into cutting it into sizes and shapes. And for me, if you're putting all of that work and effort in, that becomes a dollar figure. So, you know, so using this reclaimed stuff, uh, not reclaimed, using this um, plantation timber, which is really strong and it's renewable, is a really good thing in my book. So, there we go, getting in there. Uh, I like to use um, oak as well. Um, it just depends what's cost effective. I wanna try and keep my costs down. Um, now that I don't have a, a shop, um, I, I can afford basically to, well, not charge as much as I was having to charge before. So costs, uh, from my point of view, are definitely coming down and costs from the customer's point of view are gonna come down as well. Uh, basically all of these, these have all come down now. Um, uh, this made to order stuff. And getting in there, roughing it up. So what I'll basically do once I've done all the sides of this, I'll let this dry, which actually won't take too long. This stuff dries really, really quickly. Only needs one coat. Um, I like to go around the top of it as well, just in case, so you can't see um, any of the lighter timber underneath. If uh, if the lid moves at all or anything like that, so you've still got that nice dark look around. There we go. Now this is all going to get ready for notching as well, of course. Go. Let's have a little look. I think that part needs a bit too. And this staining and weathering, and I'll hit this with a bit of sandpaper just to then to bring a little bit of a, that lightness of the timber um, through again. Um, and I'll show you that next time I do it. But there we go. And this this is the idea of the vlogs, just to get in there and show you a little bit of the stuff that I'm doing with the guitars. Um, I figured as well, if the client's kind of following along, they can, or potential clients, because I've got to stop thinking about that because it's, you can see how that was um, me thinking about 
orders, <laughs> which I don't want to do anymore. There we go. And that, my friends, is that. So the next thing I'll be doing today is putting the stain, the stain, the clear, clear coat on this one. And I'll be doing next um, the fretting uh, of the fretboard for that guitar there. Cool. See you shortly. All right, so here we are back at the workbench. Um, we are going to be just double checking, making sure that everything's feeling nice and smooth on the sides. Uh, just using a little bit of sandpaper here to just make sure that there's no lip on the neck, between the neck and the fretboard. When I'm, I like to use the, uh, the sanding station to actually sand the sides of these flush and cut if there's any overhang uh, between the, the fretboard here and the fretboard and the, the neck. Um, but when you've got this type of uh, protrusion, it makes it difficult to actually get this section here up onto the uh, up onto the uh, the sanding platform. So good old hand sandpaper in a block. That's that trick. It's 120 followed by 240. Just make sure that's sitting nicely. Now there's a little trick here. I do like using the Maranti. However, there's two different types of Maranti. If you're here in Australia and you want to get some um, some fretboard material from Bunnings, it's reasonably inexpensive. Um, you can use the Maranti, but there is a big, big, big difference. Um, you've got, I'll bring that up here so I'm not talking to my gut. Um, there's a big difference. Um, there's a Maranti, which is a very pale, like almost as pale as that, okay? Um, and they'll be, basically they'll be sitting there in the same, uh, in the same row. Um, and you can do, use the same material for the neck, uh, for the neck itself as well. Um, the 19 by 40 millimeter Maranti or 41, might be 41 or 42 millimeter. Um, it's, it's quite reasonably priced. Um, and the thing I like about it is it already has a really nice curve over. And you will see people using, using this material. The pale one, as um, as I said before, is it's actually a very very um, porous. It's very soft. Um, the frets don't like sticking in it. They'll tend to, and it's very easy to damage the the fretboard. So stay away from the light coloured Maranti. It's fine for doing your trims around your door frames and all that sort of stuff. That's all fine. However, for a neck or a fretboard which needs to be fairly strong, quite strong, um, my suggestion is definitely go for this darker so the darker the material what i found with the maranti is the the more dense the fiber the more dense the timber is and the more it likes to grab onto that the fret tangs when you're actually hammering in the frets um, you don't have to hammer them in super hard if you're using a nice um fret saw but they're there is definitely uh, a difference between the two different colors so stay away from the light colored maranti uh, at Bunnings, uh, if you're using it for fretboard material or for, for neck blanks, um, go for the darker color one, and they're excellent. They're really, really, really good. And they make really lovely, they feel nice on your hand as well, so they already have a lovely curve over. And then you've just got to watch what you're doing as far as um, uh, 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 filing them back and making sure that there's no overhang. And I'll show you that a little bit later. So that's basically my, my tip for the day is if you're in Australia and you uh, are looking for materials, inexpensive materials to use, which are quite good, that's my tip. Dark Maranti, leave the light stuff alone. Ah, screw it. That's what these daily vlogs are all about. Here we go. Get you down here nice and low and see what I've been doing here. That's the whole idea, I suppose. Bring you along on the Birdwood Guitars journey. All right, so what I've done, you'll notice here, this is the template that I use on my steel ruler. All right, uh, this is for the 650 millimeter or 25 and a half inch scale length. Uh, this particular one's going to be a 20 fret guitar. And I get a nice sharp pencil. I'm gonna mark in 
of those fret positions. There we go. Nice sharp one. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. Let's double check that that's sitting nicely. I think that is going to be rather nice. Now, what I'll do at this point here is I'll get a couple of these vice clamps. There we go. I'm going to place one here. I always clamp the next down onto the counter. Um, I do not want them to budge. I do not want them to move. This is the saw that I use. I've got one of those bigger ones that I got, I think, from Stu Mac or something like that, but it's gone blunt. But I got one of these Japanese pull saws from, I want to say, um, I want to say, who do I want to say? I want to say real, real parts. All right, so I got that from real parts. Let's bring it away. I just I don't want all right, so what I'm gonna do, usually when I'm doing my cutting, I'll hold a set square, or T-square, whatever you call I don't know what these are called. I'm dyslexic, so, you know, whatever. Um, it's lovely and square. It's a pretty decent quality one. Um, I can't reach it because of the clamp that's here. There. I can't reach it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna put it above because there could be a very small variation. But what I can do is put it this way. Now what I'll do at this point is I'm gonna hold it nice and firmly. And I'm going to get an X-Acto knife or a craft knife and mark that spot. And I'm gonna write really carefully just across there. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Hold it there, make sure I'm in the right position. Just double check, actually, yeah. Always double check. If you're not 100% sure, just double check. Just carefully, putting pressure towards the blade so it stays in there. Now, that should get me the angle that I want. I'm double checking now to make sure that that angle is, when I flipped it back, flip this back, I'm double checking to make sure that the angle that I've got is the same here, okay, when I'm holding it this way. So I know it's clean and fresh that way. And this way. All right, there we go. Now this is actually a, a client's order. This is one of the last of the orders that I've got. So if this was a stock guitar and I stuffed it up, I'd go, oh, darn it, and I'd use it for firewood. It wouldn't bother me. But because it's time and effort involved in in the work so far, I find this actually this side, this is quite nerve-wracking for me. Um, I'm just going to... Make sure it's nice. There we go. And deep. Now, why do I do that? It gives me a guide when I'm freehand sawing. All right. So I'm going to come around here. Bumped you. Sorry. Uh, and I'm going. Actually, what I'll do is I'm just going to move you to the side there. Can you still see? Got that clamp in the way. There we go. All right. So what I'm actually going to do is use the line that's already there. That looks good. Now this is the nice thing about a pull saw. You've got a lot of control. It should be really embarrassing if I cock this up now, right? You can see this Moranti I was talking about, this dark Moranti. It's actually got a fair bit of strength to it. All right, here we go. checking the depth and that is actually a really nice cut that's lovely all right let's see if we can re repeat that on this side here so you're going to find a 
and I pull it towards myself. All right, so what I'm trying to do is use the cut that I've already got in there as a guide for the blade. Be patient with this bit. All right, be very patient with this bit. Pulling it towards myself. Now when I'm sure that I've got a good purchase, I'll start going back and forth slowly. I want to keep, like playing pool, you want to keep your elbows straight at the back. All right. Just double checking the depth. I'll do another check a little later before I hammer in the frets. But that's looking pretty good. Now this is actually going to be a left-handed guitar. So I've got to be very careful. I've actually put, if you have a little look, here I'll bring you around. I've actually put a little bit of tape on the side there and it says no dots <laughs> because I know what I'm like and I will just, I'll go into, uh, into robot mode and I'll start putting dots on this side of the neck. Now if it's a lefty, they've got to be on the other side of the neck over here. All right, so that's the deal, man. All right, so now I can basically go up the neck uh, with the set squarey t squarey trip, just as we would normally do. I find the spot. I can place it here. <laughs> nice and easy. So you don't need to see me do all of that. You see me do one, okay? So that's the little trick for if you're doing a headstock like a fancy, fancy headstock, fancy schmancy headstock like that. It comes out here, and you want to use one of these to actually put your, your frets in. That's the trick. Do it this way first, so that you keep the right, the same angle. Okay, do it that way first. Do it one or two or three this way. Score it with a knife. Follow the score with the saw very carefully, and then that will then allow you to flip and go use this to go up that way up the neck. Okay, cool. Well, I think that'll do it for today, guys. Um, I'll finish this off, and uh, you've seen me fret a, a neck before. Um, a couple of people have asked me, hang on, let me bring up here. A couple of people have asked me. Uh, I've been going back through some of the comments because I've been really, really, really slack. So a few people have actually asked me to upload um, a video of actually fretting your neck from start to finish. I'm going to do uh, a detailed one um, fairly soon, uh, not on the vlog, okay? So I'll actually do a specific one point by point. Um, that's basically it today. Uh, take it easy, and I'll see you on the next vlog. Um, check us out at birdwoodguitars.com. Um, if you're interested, if you want to see what I'm building, uh, join the group, the Cigar Box Guitar Builder Facebook group. Uh, it's a really lovely group of people uh, on there who upload pictures of the builds that they've been doing. Um, if you are a business and you are doing uh, videos, um, learn to play videos, if you are selling pickups, if you are selling bridges, if you are, and this is any of the big three, the, you know, the CBG Emporium, the CB Giddy, MGB, man, I don't care. I don't have any affiliation specifically or any endorsements or anything like that with any of the other companies. Um, Elmar, if you're over there in Europe and you're building the flat pickups and you want to put put some ads if you wanted to, I'm not asking for money, nothing at all, no reimbursement, nothing. Put your stuff up there so people, um, if you're building, if you're a pickup maker and you've just started, you know, you're starting up a business or something like that, stick stuff in here. This is where we want to see. We want, you know, we want choices. It's lovely to have choices. Uh, support the companies that you're you're working with. I personally, I order heaps and heaps of stuff from uh, CBG Emporium for markup in Queensland, uh, but I'm, I'm happy also to order different products and things like that from any of the other guys. Um, it's always fun trying new things, trying different things. So get out there and put your stuff on here. Uh, if you're interested in selling stuff, put some little, I don't care, put your ads on. Um, you know, if you're selling something on eBay and you've made it and you think it's really beautiful, man, let's see how we go. Let's, let's see if we can share the love out there. All right, take it easy. It's me. I've yapped on long enough. Bye.